So um, today we're going to do uh, a little bit. Let me see my on. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more uh, summation and then some ordering. So it's going to be kind of two distinct topics. So um, just let me get rid of this. Okay. So uh, we'll do the binomial theorem. Um, and then we'll, we'll do some stuff on orderings, which is starting into a different topic. Um, all right, so we'll start with the binomial theorem. So, uh, so this is one of the examples that I didn't, so I was going to do more on summation stuff. And so uh, this is the following theorem. So I guess it works in any ring, any commutative ring. Um, so x plus y to the n, so n is a natural number. be elements of a commutative ring ring and uh, n be a natural number okay so then we'll have x plus y to the n is going to be the sum from j is equal to 0 up to n of n choose j x to the j, y to the n minus j. So this is the binomial theorem. So this is called the binomial theorem. There's a power series version, and sometimes people call that the binomial theorem. So that's from, uh, that's in Calc 2. Um, all right, so we have this, this expression here, and so we're going to prove this by induction. First, I want to give you uh, some, some background. Uh, um, I, oh, sorry, is it, I'm tripping out here. Is it background with a G or no G? Yeah, G. Okay, so um, uh, okay, so this number here is n choose J. We call it n choose j, this is, or the binomial coefficient. Um, we usually just call it n choose j, or, or binomial coefficient. OK? Um, and this is defined to be n factorial over j factorial times n minus j factorial. All right? So, um, and uh, what this number is, is it's the number, so this is the binomial coefficient, and the meaning, so n choose j is the number of j element subsets uh, you can create, you can create from n, n elements. All right, so this is uh, what this is. So, uh, so the idea is, is that if you have a, so if I have um, five people, right, so like, so if I have five people, right, and I want to make a, a, a sub, subcommittee of, say, like two people, Right, that number would be 5 choose 2. So for example, so 5 choose 2. So this is 5 factorial over 2 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial. So this is 5 times 3 times 2 times, uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this is 2 times 1. And uh, this is 3 times 2 times 1. Right, so this goes away. So this is 5 times 2, which is 10. So given a group of, of five people here, if they were all going to shake hands, right, or, you know, that, that would be, you know, you'd be able to get 10 handshakes out of five people, for example. Right, and if it, was, if it was three people, then I guess it would be like a, how many triple high fives you could do or something like that. All right, so um, 
that's what the number five choose two is. Um, all right. Um, so this is one thing that we had. Um, uh, the other thing is, uh, so let me, let me talk about what this formula is doing. So this formula is really the generalization of Pascal's triangle. Okay. So um, let me, I'll just start it over here. So the, the, uh, the binomial theorem is really a closed form Uh, so it's not like a, uh, an algorithm uh, of, of Pascal's triangle. Uh, triangle. Okay, so Pascal's triangle is this thing. So it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, okay, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 here. Okay. And so the way that you get from this is that you, you add the two numbers above to get the, the lower one, okay? So like this one plus this one is this one, this one plus this one is this one, okay? Um, this relation is something that we proved on the homework. So this, this, so the relation, so, so we have it, the general relation Okay, is that um, uh, so we have n choose j is equal to n minus 1 choose j plus n minus 1 choose j minus 1. I think this is for uh, j n minus 1. Okay, so uh, that's what, you know, that's, that's doing this thing. So this is, this we start out with 0, 0 here, so I guess it's really like 0 choose 0, and then we have 1 choose 0, 2 choose 0, uh, and then this is 1 choose 1, and this is 2 choose 1, and this is, would be like 2 choose 2, so on and so forth. So, and then I guess we could do one more. Uh, so this is 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, uh, 3 choose 2, and then 3 choose 3 would be out here. So these are all ones, and then you have this relation that these two add up to, to this one, and that's this, this general version here, okay? So um, uh, the formula, so let's look at the example when like n is 5. So when n is 5, we can use Pascal's triangle to expand out this thing. So this is x to the fifth plus, um, so 1, 5. So uh, n choose 1 is always going to be, uh, so 1, 5, 10. n choose 1 is always going to be n. 10 x to the, so let me go over here. Uh, x squared y cubed plus 5, xy uh, to the fourth plus y to the fifth. Okay, so let me do that over here. Okay, so we have this thing. So this is this coefficient here. So this is 5 choose 0. This is 5 choose 1. Right, this coefficient here is 5 choose 2. This coefficient here is 5 choose 3. And this, these coefficients here, well, I guess I do have to go over here. So this is uh, 5 choose 4, and this is 5 choose 5 over here, 1. So this is, this is 1, and the other one's 1. The two end ones are always 5, and then it gets a little more complicated in between. OK, so uh, does that make sense, what, what's going on about this? OK, and then. This thing, uh, this is on the homework, and you can prove this directly from the definition of n choose j. Um, okay, um, 
So let me, before proving the binomial theorem, let me say one more thing about why this appears. So where, why is uh, this thing appearing? So this is an example here. So why, where does uh, or why does these n choose j appear in the binomial theorem? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's look. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to do this via an example. Okay. So uh, x plus y to the fifth. Okay. So this thing is really um, x plus y, x plus y x plus y, x plus y, x plus y, okay? And uh, it, when we expand this out, uh, um, well, we, what we'll have to do is to get a term, we have to select uh, one of these from each single uh, term, right? So, uh, so when we like, I don't know, the generalization of FOIL this out, but when we expand this out, um, what we'll do is we'll pick, you know, let's say an x from this term, 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 and maybe like a y from this term. Okay? So when we do that, we'll get a coefficient of, say, x to the fourth times y. Another way of, of doing this would be um, doing, say, um, a, a y here, then an x here, then an x here, then an x here, then an x here, okay? So that would be another way of getting the same coefficient here. So the coefficient of x to the fourth y in uh, this thing here, x plus y to the fifth, is the number of ways, so this is equal to the number of ways to uh, choose one y from each of these. So you see how this is, so this is y to the one. It's the number of ways of ways to uh, pick out terms uh, from each factor uh, to get uh, x to the fourth times y, because for each one of these we're going to get uh, a term, and then you'll see that in every one of these combinations I only have to I only get to pick y once. You guys see that? So I only get to pick y once. So that would be here in this particular one. It would be uh, five choose one one of these, which is five, and that's why the coefficient of of this thing is, is five. It's five choose one. But this, this idea generalizes, right? So if I were just going to exp like expand this out, um, you know, the number of ways to get this thing here would be the number of ways, so I have the opportunity, so suppose my default is x, so then um, you know, I'd have to choose exactly three times to pick out a y in order to contribute to that factor, right? So the, the coefficient there will be five choose uh, three. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so this is where this is coming from. All right, so now, using this relation here, I'm going to prove the binomial theorem, which is that x plus y to the n is equal to that, that sum involving binomial co coefficients. So the proof of the binomial theorem. All right. So um, the proof is by induction. Induction on n. Okay. So we'll do the case, the base case. We'll do start at n is equal to one. Okay. So so here. Um, so 
let's look at this side here. So we want to prove x plus y to the 1 is the sum. So I'm going to put a little question mark above it because this is what we want to prove. From j is equal to 0 up to 1 of 1 choose j, x to the j, y to the 1 minus j. All right. So the left hand side, or the right hand side, or let's do the left hand side. The left hand side is easy. x plus y to the 1 is just x plus y. Okay, and now we'll look at the right hand side. So the right hand side is also not so bad, but I'm just going to work it out with the notation so you guys get some more experience with this. So the right hand side, so here, um, so we have this sum from j is equal to 0 up to 1 of 1 choose j, x to the j, y to the 1 minus j. So this is equal to 1 choose 0, x to the 0, y to the 1 minus 0, plus uh, 1 choose 1, x to, the, um, uh, x to the 1, y to the 1 minus 1. All right, so this is 1 choose 0. Uh, is, is 1, so let me, let me actually write it out, 1 factorial over 0 factorial, 1 minus 0 factorial, so this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, okay, so this is 1, and this is y, plus, and then we have 1 factorial over, and so we have uh, 0, or 1 factorial, 1 minus 1 factorial, and then this is x to the 1, y to the 0, which is 1. Okay, so these are both 1, and so this is just becomes y plus x. So since the left-hand side, since the left-hand side, left-hand side and the right-hand side match, uh, left-hand side and right-hand side match, uh, we are done, right? We're done with the base case. The base case is proved. Is proved. Okay. So this is our our uh, base case. Any questions on the base case so far? Okay. So now in the inductive step, I'm going to have to do some more serious fiddling with sums in the in the, using the type of things that I talked about in the previous class. So the inductive step Okay. So here uh, so we suppose let's uh, let me do this. So suppose the formula holds for x plus y to the n minus 1 and prove it uh, for x plus y to the n. Okay, so we're going to suppose that this binomial theorem holds and we go to the n minus first power. So x plus y to the n minus 1, uh, n, okay, so I'm going to break this up. So this is x plus y times x plus y to the n minus 1. All right, now I'm going to apply the uh, inductive hypothesis. So at this stage, I apply the inductive hypothesis. j is equal to 0 to n minus 1. And this is n minus 1 choose j. And then we have uh, x to the j, y to the n minus j. All right, now I have got to move this over here, so I'm going to like. All right. Okay, so we have this uh, sum here. So this is a thing, and this is a thing. So I can use, say, the right distributed property. So I can distribute this on the right here, um, and I'll get two separate sums. Okay, so this thing here, 
This is equal to two sums. There's this x sum. It's the same thing plus the y sum. Would it be 1 to the n minus 1 minus j? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. I'm just like on autopilot. Yeah. So the n minus 1 minus j. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Good job. All right? All right. So uh, exactly, because it has to match the formula, right? And the, the formula was uh, yeah, n minus 1 minus j, because we're, since we're going up to n minus 1. Yeah, thank you. So n minus 1, so I'm just going to fill this in now. y to the n minus 1 minus j. They're the exact same thing here. OK. So uh, here, I'm now going to distribute. This is up to n minus 1. OK. Uh, so now I'm going to distribute the, the x. OK. So, uh, so I'm going to distribute the x, and I'm going to distribute the y. Since these things have like bases, I add the exponents. So this is x to the 1. So this is the sum. The first thing is the sum from j is equal to 0 up to n minus 1 of n minus 1 choose j. And then we have x to the j plus 1, y to the n minus 1 minus j. Plus, then we have a sum here from j is equal to 0 up to n minus 1, same thing n minus 1 choose j. And now I keep the x to the j. And now I get the, so this is x to the 1. And it, this is y to this thing. And we add these things. So this negative 1 will go away since we have a positive 1 here. y to the n minus j. All right. So I have these two sums here, and I want to collect them. All right. So, but the issue here is that um, this, this thing here is to a j plus first power, and this thing here is to a j power. Are you guys see that? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace that with something else. So I'm just going to replace it with k. So I'm going to do kind of a, a change of, of variables here. So let's do a change of variables. So let me erase this, and I'll, I'll do the change of variables over here. OK, let me give myself some space here. So we'll do the change of variables, or of index, I call it, index for the first sum. OK, and so this is exactly like a definite integral in calculus. OK. So in the definite integral and calculate like a u substitution, okay? So this is kind of like a u substitution, except for I'm just going to let, for, for in the first sum here, I'm going to let j plus 1 be equal to k, okay? So we view this as a function of j, as a function of j. So I'm just going to shift 1. All right, and so we look at the, the starting point and the ending points of the sums. So the end points of the sum. And this is the same way that you change the end points of an integral. Like, so you have the integral from A to B. You need to change the, the bounds of integration. OK? So when j, the end points were j is equal to 0 and j is equal to n minus 1. Right? And when I change them into k's, so when j is equal to 0, k is equal to what? 1. one. And when j is equal to n minus 1, k is equal to n. All right. So this is our, 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 this is our change here. And we can also solve for j. Uh, j is equal to k minus 1. All right, do you guys see that? All right. So um, now I'm just going to put that into the first sum. So now I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to start copying down that sum again. But now in the first sum, I'm going to go from k is equal to 1 up to n of n choose something, right? And then we have j, this is just x to the k, y to the n minus k. All right, what do I put here? k minus 1. K minus one. 
because k is j plus 1. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did put k minus 1 in there. Yeah. Oh. So you can, you can do it both ways. You can solve for this and say that uh, j is k minus 1 and just put it in. But you'll get the same thing. OK. All right. And then uh, we have the other term, right? The sum here from j is equal to 0 up to n minus 1 of n. Uh, sorry, there's an n minus 1 here, right? Uh, and then we have at n minus 1, choose j of x to the j, y to the n minus j. OK. All right, so this is a dummy variable. So now you guys good with this, this change here? OK. So now this is a dummy variable, so I could just switch it back to j if I want. OK, it doesn't matter what it is. So I'm just going to call it j again. j is equal to 1 up to n of n minus 1, uh, j minus 1, x to the j, y to the n minus j, plus the sum here from j is equal to 0 up to n minus 1 of n minus 1, j, uh, x to the j, y to the n minus j. Uh, things are looking pretty good, right? So we're almost at the point where we can apply that, the, the Pascal relation. Right, the relation from Pascal's triangle, which is this thing, right? But we're not quite there yet because we have this problem with our indices here, right? This sum goes from j is equal to 1 to n, and this sum goes from j is equal to 0 to n minus 1, right? So we would just kind of like to collect these together, and then I would be able to factor out this term and just have this thing plus this thing in the thing, and then we'd be able to, to just replace that with n choose j, right? But we're not quite there yet because this thing has an extra term here, and this thing has an extra term at 0. So like what I said from the previous class, we're just going to peel off those terms. Okay? So I'm going to peel off the first term here, <coughs> or the, the last term here, and I'm going to peel off the first term here. So I'm going to write it over here. So maybe I'll do it like this. Okay? So this thing is, so we're going to peel off the last term here. So this is n minus 1 n minus 1, x to the n, y to the n minus n, plus the sum. And now we go from j is equal to 1 up to n minus 1, because I took out the n term here, and I put it right here. So n minus 1, choose j minus 1, x to the j, y to the n minus j. All right? Plus, OK, and then I'm going uh, to also uh, peel off the starting term here. Okay, so the starting term here will be uh, the zero term. Okay, so plus the zero term from this one, and then I'm going to replace the sum here. So this is n minus 1, choose 0, x to the 0, y to the n minus 0. And now we have two sums n minus 1, choose j x to the j, y to the n minus j. Now our two sums here look exactly the same. Uh, yeah? Uh, on the board, if it has n minus 1 choose n minus 1, is that supposed to be n minus 1 choose j minus 1? Uh, here? Towards the center, yeah. No, this is supposed to be n minus 1 choose n minus 1. Because what I did was, I took the term when j is equal to n, that term here, the one at the very end, right? And then I plug that in for j. So that's here, and here, and here. And that's why this is, so I did, j, this is really a j minus 1, but j is equal to n. This is x to the j, which, which j is equal to n. And, and y to the uh, n minus, let's see, n minus, uh, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, n minus n, yeah, sorry, not n minus n. n minus n, thank you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, maybe this is what you're saying. Uh, so this term here, this should be n minus n. Sorry about that. Yeah. OK. Thank you. All right. Uh, does that clear up your question? Yeah. OK. So um, oh yeah. All right. So now, let's, uh, so now these two th terms have the same bounds of integration, so we can add the insides of them. OK? All right. Let me make sure I have space now. Let me get rid of that. OK. All right. OK, so this is equal to, so we'll go all the way up here. 
Okay? And this term here, I claim that that's 1, so this is just x to the n plus, um, and then uh, let me put this other term up here. So this is also y to the n. And I'll do a little side work to show you that. And then I'm going to collect these sums here. j is equal to 1 up to n minus 1. And now I get to collect the coefficients. n minus 1, j minus 1, plus n minus 1 choose j of x to the j, y to the n minus j, like so. OK, so this is a y, and then this goes to n minus 1. So here, I'm using that this thing is 1 and this thing is 1. OK, so I can explain that if you guys want. But now we have uh, this inductive step. So this thing looks like, let me write this suggestively like this, y to the n plus from j is equal to 1 up to n minus 1. And now we use the Pascal relation, the thing that I talked about that, that you guys proved on the homework. Um, uh, this thing here, x to the j, y to the n minus j, plus, and then we have x to the n. All right? And I claim that this is really uh, n choose 0, x to the 0, y to the n minus 0, plus this sum here from j is equal to 1 up to, from j is equal to 1 up to n minus 1 of this part. plus, there's this term here, plus uh, the other term, which is n choose n, x to the n, y to the n minus n. So I'm just rewriting this term like this. OK? So this, is, this we can just rewrite now as what we are our result. We get our result, because this is the two missing n terms of our series, or of our sum. So this is the sum from j is equal to 0 up to n of n choose j, x to the j, y to the n minus j, like so. All right. So, and this is what we wanted to prove. All right. Does that make sense? OK. So, um, OK. So, since we proved, so this proves the inductive step. So, it took a couple boards, right? But uh, since we proved the base case and the inductive step, then we're done. OK? So, since we proved the base case, all right. Okay, so who wants to see some more binomial coefficients or anything like this? Yeah. Um, yeah, this one? The left board, uh, one, one to your left. This one? Yeah, the bottom, the bottom line where it's, uh, how would you go from y to the n minus n right above it to y to the n minus 0? From here to here? Yeah. That's not an equality. This is, this is one expression. So this isn't, this thing here, this is, oh, so there, oh, we had two parts. We had this part and we had this part, right? Uh, so okay. this is a and this is b, right? And this whole part is a. And this whole part is b. Right? And what I did was is I, I took off the, to get a, I took off this top term. And to get b, I took off this bottom term. This is why this su sum starts at 1 and this sum start, ends at n minus 1 here. Instead of, it originally started at n, or ended at n. And this one originally started at 0. And then I had one extra term, and these were the two extra terms that I forgot to, that I, that I, uh, that I took out. Does that make sense? OK. Does everyone see why this binomial coefficient is 1? So a quick way to see it is that these, when you, these are the outside of Pascal's triangle, right? 
So that's when, you know, that's when everything's one on one side and one on the other, okay? So th these are also on the outside of Pascal's triangle here, right? But they're just one level above. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, that's one way of thinking about that. Okay, so yeah, so this example involves a lot of different summation things, right? So it's, um, you know, you, we, we had to use the change of index here. So this is what you can do. You can just set it equal to the thing that you want to change, and then you just have to be mindful of the bounds of integration. And, um, uh, you know, um, and then you have to be able to, you know, the other thing that you can do is you have to use the thing that we talked about in the previous class where you can peel off terms. Right? And so here I was really breaking off, I was breaking the sum into two sums. One of the sums um, you know, was just a sum involving one term, and the other sum was a, you know, the other, you know, and then just the rest of it. So like here I broke, the integral, I br I broke up the, the sum from j is equal to 1 up to n from, from to uh, j is equal to 1 up to n minus 1, and then the, the sum from n minus 1 to n minus 1. And that the, when you have a sum where it's like the starting point and the ending point are the same, it's just one term. And that's what this is. Yeah? Here. You're talking about what, why did this change? Yeah, yeah. Or this one? The left one here? And then this one's just n minus one. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the same equation. Same yeah, equation yeah, here. There, yeah, yeah, that's true. There is minus one, minus one, but the left side is n. Uh, they are not same. Yeah, so this came from uh, the change of variables that we did, right? So this, so originally the sum was looked like this from j is equal to one up to n minus one. Yeah. But when we multiplied everything times x, right, we ended up getting a j plus one in the original thing. And the j plus 1 we converted to a k. And then that's how we, then, then we ended up switching it back to a j. So I, I can explain it after class if you want a little more. OK? So I have office hours after class, too. Yeah? Um, so do you substitute uh, on that, the last line of the board you're right next to when it's n minus 1 and the binomial coefficients n minus 1 and then j, and uh -huh. then going to the next step where, there, where it's n minus 1 and minus 1? Here? Where you, where you peeled off a term? Yeah. So, so, so I took this thing and I plugged in n. So take this and set j is equal to n. OK. That's what that is. So it's just the sum of n to n? Uh, yeah, so this, this sum will be the sum from n to n. Yeah, or I guess n minus, uh, let's see. Yeah, n to n, I guess. Yeah, n to n. Yeah, n to n. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's one term. It's a one term sum. Yeah. Okay. Everyone looks pretty satisfied with this. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. So uh, now I'm going to uh, switch gears a little bit and, and talk about ordering. Okay, so this is my spiel on sums. And so that's, that's that. Um, and now I want to talk about uh, ordering. So we're, st we're starting into chapter four. Okay, and then this is a little bit that's not in chapter four, but I, I want to say it because I'm going to use it later. Okay, so orderings. So there's a bunch of different types of orderings. OK, so let me give you a definition. A partial order on a set S is a relation uh, satisfying uh, the following three axioms. Um, so let's call the relation R. So the relation is, is that it's reflexive. It'll be transitive. So 
So this is saying that x is related to x for all x. OK, I'm going to write the quantifier at the end. That some people do that, OK? So a transitive, you have to be careful when you write quantifiers at the end when you have more than one quantifier, OK? Just, so you, just to warn you guys, OK? Um, so transitive means that if x is related to y and y is related to z, then this implies that x is related to z. So this is the usual one. This is for all x, y, and z, OK? And then um, the last one is, is not the symmetric property, like the equivalence relation, but it's an anti-symmetric property. So the last property is anti-symmetry. So it says that if uh, x is related to y and y is related to x, this implies that x is equal to y. OK, this is for all x, y. OK, so we have these three axioms to give the definition of a partial order. So partial order is, is like, you think of it like an inequality thing. So a set, so let me give you a definition, another definition, a pair, uh, S, R, consisting of a set, of a set uh, together with a partial order is called a partially ordered set, surprisingly enough. Ordered set. Or sometimes it's just called a post set. So a set with a partial order is a partially ordered set. So let me give you an example. So this is one of these things where it's like I can give you an example of a partial ordering and then be like, is this a partial ordering or not? Right? OK. And then uh, I'll ask you, like, what things does it violate? OK, so here are the examples. OK, so the first example, um, you could say the real numbers with the usual, where uh, this thing is the usual, uh, is the usual relation. is a partially ordered set. OK, so the real numbers with its usual inequality. This is no longer an equivalence relation, because the equivalence relation, you had this symmetric property. right? So it said that if x is related to y, then y is related to x. We don't have that anymore. So the natural numbers with this thing is a post set. So this is the divisibility relation. OK? So before, we proved that, uh, uh, and even on the exam, we proved that a, if a divides b and b divides a, then a and b are the same, right, for the natural numbers. OK? Um, so, um, OK, so let me give you another one that's kind of weirder. OK? So C0, uh, the continuous functions, and we're going to define, um, uh, we'll do, do this thing. I don't, let's see, I want to do, I'll just call it R, OK? Where, so this is the, uh, this is the continuous functions. On the real line. And then we're going to define that f of x is related to g of x if and only if for all x in the real numbers, f of x is less than or equal to g of x. OK? So here, in this example, this is a, this is a partial order. But there's something weird that happens. Right? 
So there's examples where they're no longer, not every element is comparable. So like here, we could have some f of x up here, and we could have some g of x down here. Right? And you clearly, in this case, you have f of x is related to g of x. OK, so this one's smaller. But there's also other weird examples where you could have something like this. f of x is doing this. So let me, uh, and then they could cross. They could be g of x. OK, so this one here, they're, they're always switching. Right? And g of x switch. So it's not the case that f of x is bigger than g of x for all x. Okay? There exists x. There exists some, um, uh, uh, you know, some, some points where g is higher than f. All right? So not all el the elements are relatable. Right? So, so here we don't have have uh, f of x related to g of x and g of x related to f or sorry or g of x related to f of x. So they're not the same, right? So. Um, all right, and so let me just say this. So, so, um, so let me just give you another definition. So a total order, total or linear order, uh, is a partial order order such that is a partial order R such that we either have x is related to y or y is related to x, right, for all x and y. Okay, so that's the definition of a total order. And you'll see that this, the first two examples, these are total orders, right? Um, or let's see, this is a total order, but I think you can have uh, two things that don't divide each other. So like 15 and um, I don't know, what's another thing? So 7, right? It's not the case that this divides this or this divides this. So these two are not, to so, so here, you know, we don't have, and 7 doesn't divide 15, right? So this isn't a total order, right? Uh, this is a total order. And so, that, so let me just write that down. So the first two, the first example is a total order, but the second two are not total orders. So one is a total order, right? And two and three are not total orders. Why is it three? So three, because of this example here. So here, this w the, neither of these two functions are comparable here. So it's not the case that one is bigger than the other. Oh, okay. it, has to be strictly it has to be strictly one. One's always going to be bigger than the other, right? And so in this situation, they can flip around and not do this. So another interesting partial order is, um, so another partial order, so four. So another example. So uh, on sets, so, uh, so A is a subset of B, so the subset relation. So this is on the set of sets is a partial order. So it's not necessarily true that two subsets are necessarily contained in each other. All right. So um, let me just say that we're going to talk more about sets. I just wanted to introduce partial orderings. Um, uh, but uh, th the set of sets will end up being weird. And hopefully we get to this th by the end of the class. So this ends up like breaking everything. Okay? 
So, um, all right. And uh, so next class you'll have Puck, and you guys will be talking more about sets.